Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the method of salt preparation which involves reacting an acid with an excess of an insoluble solid. This method is used to prepare soluble salts with the exception of group 1 salts as well as ammonium salts. Let's see how this works. Let's say I want to prepare copper 2 sulfate. We have learned the chapter of acids and bases before. To prepare salts, there are several reactions of acids that we can use. What are some such reactions? Are you able to list them down? So three of them are shown here. We can react an acid with a metal to give salt and hydrogen. We can react an acid with a base to give salt and water. We can also react an acid with a carbonate to give salt, water and carbon dioxide. Let's see why certain combinations of reactants would work and others would not work. So let's head over to the lab and take a look. Over here, we're going to test out different combinations of reactants and see which one works the best. We are going to use the predict, observe, explain thinking routine again. Before I carry out the reaction, I would like you to think whether a reaction will take place, what you think you might see. And after that, I would like you to come up with an explanation for the observation. The first combination that we are going to test out involves pieces of copper. I'm going to add that to a beaker. And to that, I'm going to add some sulfuric acid. Well, it seems like there is no visible reaction. There's no evidence of any bubbling at all. And that's because copper is an unreactive metal and it doesn't react with sulfuric acid. Is it possible not to use an acid? Over here, we're going to test out. I'm going to add copper to carbonate now. And to there, I'm going to add sodium sulfate. Do you think there will be a reaction? Again, it seems like nothing much is going on. There is no visible reaction. That's because copper 2 carbonate doesn't react with a salt such as sodium sulfate. Also, copper 2 carbonate is insoluble in water. The third reaction we are going to test out involves copper 2 carbonate and sulfuric acid. Here we see vigorous effervescence happening. And that's because carbon dioxide is being given off. When the bubbling stops, we are left with a blue solution. Now it seems like we have made copper 2 sulfate. Is it pure? What do you think? I'm going to take a piece of blue litmus paper and dip it into the copper 2 sulfate solution. It seems like the blue litmus paper turns red. Why do you think this happens? This tells us that there must be some acid present, right? And where does this acid come from? Remember we added sulfuric acid? And we have added the acid in excess. And the excess acid is what turns the blue litmus paper red. But we want to prepare copper 2 sulfate. We do not want it to be contaminated by the acid. What can we do? Well, when I add more carbonate, I'm reacting away the excess acid. Okay. And when I add the carbonate in, I see bubbling. That's where I know that there's still acid that's unreacted there. I do not want the acid in my salt because it's very difficult to separate from the salt later on when I just want copper 2 sulfate. At this point of time, it seems like I've added an excess of copper 2 carbonate and all the acid in the beaker has been reacted already. But now, I have a mixture of insoluble copper 2 carbonate and copper 2 sulfate that I've just made. How can I separate them? We filter the mixture to remove the excess copper 2 carbonate and we'll get copper 2 sulfate as the filtrate. So we have a dialogue between two students here. One says that we should add an excess of a carbonate to react with all the acid present, while student B says we should add more acid to react with all the carbonate present. Who do you think is right? I would agree with student A because by adding an excess of the carbonate, the excess carbonate can be filtered off and removed. However, if we follow what student B does, the excess acid is difficult to remove and you will contaminate the salt that we are forming. When it comes to this method of salt preparation, 
The moral of the story is to add an excess of a metal, base, or carbonate to an acid, and then filter off the excess. This is to ensure we do not be left with an excess of acid, which is difficult to remove later on. Let's take a look at this example using zinc sulfate. We can make use of zinc, zinc oxide, zinc hydroxide, or even zinc carbonate as the solid. It doesn't really matter. But we have to add an excess of this solid and then filter it off. So over to our notes, the graphic here shows the steps taken to prepare zinc sulfate crystals. We can start off using zinc. We can also use zinc oxide, zinc hydroxide, or zinc carbonate. The acid chosen has to be sulfuric acid if we were to prepare zinc sulfate. However, if we would like to prepare zinc chloride instead, we have to use hydrochloric acid as the acid. Let's go over the steps one by one. We start by adding an excess of zinc powder to 25 cm3 of dilute sulfuric acid in the beaker. The exact volume doesn't really matter, but 25 cm3 is a good uh, amount to work with. This step ensures all the acid has been reacted. Okay, we'll continue stirring until no more solid dissolves, or if the reaction produces a gas until there is no more bubbling. So this will also tell us that the reaction is complete. We'll filter to remove the excess solid, in this case zinc powder, and collect the filtrate, which is the salt solution that we want. Following which are the steps for crystallization, and this will be nothing new to you, given that we have learned this in the chapter of separation techniques. We will heat the solution to saturation, cool to allow crystals to form. When cooling, crystals form because the solubility of a salt decreases when temperature decreases. To separate the crystals from solution, we have to filter the mixture to remove the crystals. We then wash the crystals with a small amount of cold distilled water to remove impurities. We have to use a small amount because otherwise the crystals would dissolve. And similarly, cold distilled water because at the lower temperature, the crystals are less likely to dissolve. So this step helps to remove any impurities. Finally, dry the crystals between sheets of filter paper again. So let's try a couple of questions. Pause the video, give it a try, and then we'll go over the answers. Okay, question three. What are the best starting reagents, reagent meaning chemicals, for preparing copper 2 sulfate crystals? We can't use copper metal because copper is unreactive. Copper 2 carbonate and aqueous ammonium sulfate. Ammonium sulfate is a salt. It doesn't react with a carbonate. Copper 2 chloride is a salt. It doesn't react with an acid either. Finally, for D, copper 2 oxide is a base. Acid and base give salt plus water. So D is a possible option. Alright, when it comes to this method of salt preparation, the acid that we use depends on the anion of the salt. So when it's nitrate, we use nitric acid, sulfate, we use sulfuric acid, and chloride, we use hydrochloric acid. Okay, there are a few choices here. We can use copper 2 oxide, we can use copper 2 hydroxide, we can also use copper 2 carbonate. They all work as long as they are used in excess. Okay, for the second one, I'm just going to write the formula to save space. Okay, metal, base, or carbonate. And for the last one, same thing. We can use the metal, base, or carbonate. So just bear in mind for this method, if your metal is unreactive, you can't use uh, the metal to do the reaction. Okay, so that's all we have for this method. We'll see you next time. Bye! <music>